Hey guys, and welcome to another Brushmaster video. We've got a tutorial for you today. Um, I'm going to step through and show you in a bit more detail how I painted the Power Sword for Hellbrick. This wonderful GW miniature that I've just painted. And I'm doing the narration very loosely today, so I'll probably waffle and say a load of shit over it, so my apologies for that. Um, but as you see here, I started off I, I started off with a certain train of thought here of I wanted a, some blue in there because it, it's a really great color for showing power on these swords and a glow. Um, but then I wanted to get green in there as well, which are two colors that you know sort of don't normally go together. But I, I felt like if I put this light green over the patches of blue, then as you can see here, I can blend the blue to the green and get this sort of turquoisey mix in between. Now, I, I go through quite a lot of back and forth on this. So I'm sort of blending colors in here and I'm sort of checking the tones as I go and trying to balance in my mind whether it's what I like. Um, and as you can see here, another sort of important factor here is I don't do the edge highlighting straight away with the slightly darker colors. I, I do focus on what we call mapping out where the highlights are going to be. So at the moment, it, it doesn't look great, but I'm sort of really trying to just map in where all these elements are going to be where I want my highlight spots and my shiny spots. And as you can see just a minute ago, I went from a medium darkish blue to a very light green. Then I went back to a, a sort of bluish gray color. So I'm heading more in that blue zone now. So I'm trying to get this real shifting colors. And as you can see, I, I do quite a bit of glazing in between some of these where I, I'm just adjusting tones. Um, as I'm adding colors, I'm... I'm sort of seeing things as I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, yeah, this needs to be a bit more bluish. This needs to be a bit more greenish. And I'm just going back and forth with these tones. And as you can see here, I'm getting more now that sort of turquoisey look, which is what I was really trying to get without just painting turquoise. Um, Going in with sharper highlights now, and you can see I've done some of the edge highlighting now. This sort of brings out the hard edges of, of this power sword. Um, and again, more blue glazes. Um, I missed a step here, my camera messed up, where I actually painted all the little lightning streaks across the sword. Um, and all that was, was I just had the ivory paint and I thinned it down quite a lot and I had a very sharp tip brush and I just was dragging that across at different angles on the sword, trying to create these little sparks of lightning. And with this glaze here, I'm sort of glazing in between those on the sword to try and give the effect of the lightning or these little zags of power are more prevalent on the sharp edges, which is how I sort of feel it would look. Um, getting into more that sort of little power conduit middle section here, um, I'm sort of painting it with a similar blue, that star blue. And my focus here was to get the centerpiece painted just very basically. You know, I, I didn't want it sort of highly bright NMM because I always figured that I was going to build up like a glow effect around it. So I don't want the main object to be too shiny and powerful. Otherwise the effect is, is going to be lost with, you know, the power and the lights around it. So here you can see I slowly start with thin mixes. I'm painting around the edge of that I call it a power conduit. I don't quite know what it is, um, but it seems to be the source of power in the sword. This is where the main effect of the lights and that are coming from. Um, but it's important here, when you're doing OSL, 
something like this is you'll see when I build it up, the OSL effect is I start with the darkest possible light color. And that is the widest bit that I'm going to paint. So the outer glow from the light should be the darkest of the light color. And as we paint closer and closer to the light source, we get brighter and brighter. So that that's a, a rule of OSL we have to remember is that the glow dissipates as it spreads out from the light source. So as you can see here, the, the little end nubbin bit is where the main light is going to be for me on this, this part. So I push more and more ivory and light tones around that end piece because I, I want that to be like a little glowing part where like all these lightning sparks are sort of originating from and pushing out from. So I keep going on this and the, the other thing I would say is when, when I'm painting anything like this, the first, the first layers, so the darkest layer, would have been my thickest consistency of paint. So I would have a much lower water to paint ratio for the outer colors. Um, and as I get lighter and lighter with highlights, and this usually works for everything I paint, the paint gets thinner and thinner and I have less and less paint on the brush because as I get lighter and higher values, I want them to be smaller and I want to have more control with my brush. So it, it's important to Get your mixes thinner and thinner as you go. And that was the final steps, guys. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time for another Brushmaster video.